Hi there, guys, and welcome to, oh, the first Train Sim Classic 2024 video. And what a banger it's going to be anyway. We are looking at the Midland Mainline and Hanson Pack from Armstrong Powerhouse. This route was started off uh, quite a while ago as a community project between Toby and Pablo. Uh, ooh, a good while ago. Um, and then I luckily got a preview of it on stream. And uh, Richard saw it and went, oh, this is my local line. So he got in touch with him and has taken it to a whole new level. We've seen a lot of screenshots over this over the past couple of days. I have had a look at them. Um, I've also just had a quick read of the manual. So I'm excited to give this a drive and see what's changed. It's in depth. Uh, there's a lot of audio stuff. <laughs> Being AP, there's going to be some audio stuff. And some audio stuff that's quite different to the sort of thing I quite like. So I would usually not put ambient audio in routes. So I'm really excited to see if this sort of changes my mind. So I'm pleased to see, uh, but going to be pleased to see what that looks like. I'm not going to drag on too much with the yakking because I want to get this driven and get it done and dusted and see what it's actually going to look like. It's really exciting having a, a route project from AP again because the Wary Lines was always supposed to be a bit of a one-off. Then we got like the updated Wary Lines and now we've got this. Does that mean we might see some more route stuff from AP? I hope so. But who knows? Let's uh, get started. The scenario we are doing is nine Romeo six three or six five. Let me go back down to the scenarios. It is nine Romeo six three? It's the twenty one thirty five. No, five six is what we're doing. Sorry, five six. <laughs> I was going to say, did I pick the right one? Yes. 9 Romeo 56. Get it right, Alan. 1832 uh, Gatwick Airport to Bedford. Hello, Drive First Things First release doors here at St Pancras. You're booked to part at 1936. You're then called West Hampstead, Thameslinks, and Auburn City, Harpenden, Luton Airport Parkway, Luton, Leegrave, Harlington, Flitwick, and Bedford. So this should give us a good run over the route. This is the scenario that was suggested to me by Richard as well. So it should be the best one to do. Let's get started. AWS operational. We have the green so we can take our um, DRA off. And that's pretty much it for the 700. It's a relatively basic thing to start up, isn't it? Oh, right. I know what's going on. I need to just restart my controller software. And then we should be good to go. So yeah, this project, I, I, I estimate about 18 months, maybe a bit longer. Um, I think it was like last August that I showed it off. I think. I could be completely out. I'm rubbish with, day, with, with times at the minute. It sounds daft, but since COVID, I've not known what year's what and what's been going on. Really bad, isn't it? Um, but anyway, yeah, that's that waffle out of the way. Yeah, there we go. We're all right now. Uh, my DSD is off because I haven't got my pedal and also we'll be doing some out the cab stuff. So I don't want that to catch us out. So we are at some pancras anyway. And I can definitely hear some uh, bits above us. So we'll tell you what the gist of the route is. Well, we've still got a couple of minutes and then you can sort of see what you think. There is something I want to get to as well. There's some recommended settings and all sorts I want to talk about. But the overview. This pack overhauls the DTG's Midland Mainline London to Bedford to a high standard to represent the route roughly between 2011 and 2019. And the summary of the key features is majority of scenery visible from driver's cab has been ripped out and replaced with higher quality and more accurate detailed assets. Overhead line equipment completely replaced. 12 car platforms added. HST speed limits added. King's Cross Thames Link added. Uh, Cricklewood Curve Junction, Brent Curve Junction to Dullington Hill Junction relayed with accurate gradients. Additional track laid between Carlton Road Junction and Junction Road Junction. <laughs> junction, Junction, Junction. Um, signal functionality vastly improved using a single enhancement pack. Uh, it is packaged in this route for this route only. So you, the signal EP is you get the functionality of the signal EP in this route only if you don't own the signal EP already from AP. Which is quite a nice touch. It's quite a nice touch. Um, it's got neutral sections and cab secure radio boards added as well as mile posts and a load of other bits and pieces. Let's get doors closed and let's get moving and then we can uh, go from there.
Right, so one of the key things, I'm getting quite fine FPS at the moment, 25 FPS, but it does have a system requirement level at the top here. Um, it says minimum of six gigabytes of RAM. If you have less RAM than this, you run the risk of experience without memory errors. I think that's optimistic, if I'm truly honest. I genuinely would not be running TS on anything more, less than 16. Um, at the minute, whilst you may be able to run the route, Maybe on a quick drive, would you be able to run it with any sort of decent level of AI? I very much doubt it. Six gig of RAM. Very, very much doubt it. And I'd be surprised if anybody's really got six gig of RAM these days. So recommended for the best FPS in busy detailed areas of the route, Bedford, Luton, St Albans City and Cricklewood South. We recommend the following. Eight gigs of RAM. Again, I would go higher for that. Um, processor, max turbo clock of five gigahertz. Which is, yeah, fine. And there's an interesting bit about GPU, which is always an interesting point. Uh, Train Simulator Classic is very heavy in its use of your processor, so your graphics card isn't usually so important. Anything remotely well matched your processor, so your graphics card does not cause a bottleneck, will suffice. You can find out whether your graphics card is a bottleneck by reducing the resolution if you play it. Uh, you play it. If your FPS increases when reducing the resolution, your graphics card is probably what is limiting FPS. This answer pack will still function just fine for those of lesser systems. What is recommended above for FPS could well be limited for the aforementioned busy detailed areas. I don't know. In my head, that is a bit that's a bit optimistic. Um, but saying that, I'm getting 24, 25 FPS here. Absolutely fine. Um, I am on quite a high spec machine, so um, what is my processor? This is looking so much better. Wow. God, if you remember what this route was like before. I haven't driven it for ages either. I sh probably should have done. But God, this looks better. Wow. Yeah, sorry. A 13 series of video, uh, 13 series processor and a RTX 3090 and 64 gigs of RAM. So I am definitely on the higher end uh, there, but still, I'm, my, my graphics are at full as well. Oh, I might need to reinstall my HSTs. That's uh, got some claggy HSTs going on there. Which usually just indicates that I need to reinstall the AP pack. Hopefully we won't come across too many of them. It won't take away from the route anyway, Jesus. How good does this look? Proper brings it up to a modern looking standard. As much as I love new routes, route upgrades for me are also a really big one. Because they feel familiar, but improved, and I think you notice it a lot more. Some really nice bits around here. So I'll just have a quick sort of look around this sort of bit here and stuff. It just feels so much more lived in than the original version of the route. The original version of this route was dire. Let's be completely honest. It was madly unfinished. It was just not very good. Just really not very good. Um, weird hanging gantries, missing signals. You name it. It was all a bit all over the place, wasn't it? Loads of big sparse bits of scenery. This was all just like empty. But this looks really nice. There's going to be a big flurry of scenarios for this as well. A really big flurry of scenarios. It was one of those routes where, especially with the time period, Richard said it in as well. AP have said it in, sorry, I should be saying. Um, we've got, I think, pretty much all the stock to run it. We're we missing anything. Two two twos, seven hundreds, HSTs, um, three one nines. I'm sure we probably are missing something I can't think of. I don't know. I don't think we are. The Midland Mainline really isn't my area. 
at all. Um, it's probably the main line that I know the least about. And it's, it is definitely my least travelled one. Um, in fact, I've never done this section of this route in real life. I've come down to Bedford. But not uh, come this way. I mean, geographically, not railway style ge uh, geography as well here. So, right, we've looked at the recommended settings. Make sure you use the recommended ambient sound settings for things to work. Uh, Richard's made that very clear in the manual. So, scenery, vegetation wise, uh, well, I did, that was a cautionary aspect, wasn't it? But I think that's just gone green. Um, vegetation, many assets from a vegetation enhancement pack are packaged utilising this enhancement pack. Combined with careful use of grass in the foreground and a more performance friendly 2D assets further from the track, this route now has rich, luscious vegetation. So far, we've seen, considering we've been in the the enclosed bit, uh, I can say that that looks very true so far. That's definitely green, but then it's double yellow afterwards. Well, then we're stopping at West Hampstead anyway. Uh, another thing that's cool about this is taking a lot of care in how vegetation looks in autumn, spring and winter, which is often neglected in routes. While it's hard to beat the height of summer with everything in bloom, this route is a joy to drive in all seasons. That's a real, that's quite a game changer. If they've managed to get that looking good, that is a bit of a game changer because winter always just looks dire in TS. So being able to have a route that's drivable in, in, in winter and spring and autumn, like to a good standard, it's nice to see. Something I'd like to do more with our routes, but we just haven't really... Um, had the ability to do it just yet. Uh, next thing we've gone to is trackside clutter. Special attention has been given to trackside clutter, such as signage, cable trunking, railway waste, and junction boxes. All of these things come together to simulate a detailed and varied railway environment. We're already seeing the extra bits of graffiti, the lines left at the trackside here. The detail is definitely there. It's definitely, definitely there. It definitely feels like a new route. Times are supposed to be in this 43, so yeah, we're not, not bad timing wise. I'm trying to keep some time because I haven't got long to do this video either. What are we, full length? So I think if I remember rightly, there's a bit, the access to these um, platforms, all, all the stations has all been done. That was done on the, the version that I got to drive a while ago. Um, so I'm going to go and check that some of that's still there. Because that was one of the bits I did quite like. They were sort of paying special attention to access to and from the stations. Again, it's not something I'd massively go sort of overboard on but it does it does work it does work right let's have a quick fly around well we're stopped here i know we're not going to be long i think there's a path yeah here we go i'm trying to remember some of the bits from when i did the the, the stream of this a long long time ago um fence and everything's looking brilliant there's all the the right bits up to the station and stuff so yeah cool i like it and that's just in time for us to hop back in the cab. Get ready to go. But it does look smart with their veg, doesn't it? And this then the Sky and Weather EP and stuff. Oh, I was supposed to reinstall the Sky and Weather EP before I did this. I did download it, but I haven't reinstalled it. But it looks fine to me. Sorry, Richard. I'm trying to think of cab ride videos I've seen of this area as well. And just bits of the route just feel like completely new routes. And we're seeing so many decent uh, new route upgrades coming out. I mean, we've had Gemma come out recently over on ATS that again makes the whole route feel like a whole new route. And this is definitely on par. It's looking fantastic. 
loving some of the vegetation down the, the embankments and stuff here. I'm guessing this will probably be the first route built specifically with the AP vegetation in mind. Like, sort of from the get-go, I suppose. Well, not from the get-go, because it had um, a lot of JT foliage in it beforehand. So one of the things that... Uh, the next things it speaks about... Oh, it's a little bit jittery. But this is always going to be next to the depot here. It's always going to be a bit bad. Let's pick back up, all right. That's fine. I can take hits like that for, for the level of detail that's in this. 100%. All over line equipment has been completely removed and replaced with the high quality assets from Just Train's common library. Each gantry and hangar has been carefully placed, chosen to reflect the prototype as closely as possible. Uh, mile posts, once again using the common library, mile posts have been accurately placed every quarter of a mile as per reality. After over a century in situ, many of these mile posts have developed a lean which has also been represented. So there is mile posts as well for those of you that like to do your proper route learning and um, not using the HUD at all. That's now there. This is looking brilliant. So boundary fencing. One of my... Oh, another HST. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. It's shy. It's shy. Don't look at it. It's shy. I should have restarted the video, but I just don't have time. So I massively, massively apologise. Please don't think that is a fault with this product or anything. It is 100% on my end. I could never do one of these uh, AP preview videos with it with everything being perfect. It just wouldn't be a proper one. Um, <laughs> so boundary fencing has been added where it was previously missing. Uh, Palisade fencing has been replaced and post and wire or vice versa to reflect reality. Where this changed during the era of 2011 to 2019, the type that was in place longest has been used. So they've done a lot of the fencing. You might drive this bit of this route and realise that there's a bit of fencing different. But what they're saying is they've used the type of fencing that was there for the longest in that time period. It's a fair compromise. It's a fair compromise. I would probably have just gone with what there was. Because um, it's just easier. Uh, night lighting has been overhauled to be realistic, to be of a realistic colour. Coverage and intensity, a colour temperature of around 4000K has been used as per reality for station lighting. Nice. The screenshots of station lighting do look lovely. Again, this bit's looking really nice. I don't think that some of these assets on the side were there before. They're quite cool. There's definitely been a lot of scenery replaced. An awful lot of scenery has been replaced. Like they said, they really have gone to town with it. Smart, this bit. It's the M1 next to zero, isn't it? What have I got? Got probably many amps there. Looking lovely. The line side vegetation and foliage is bang on. Very, very nice. I'm impressed. I am really, really impressed. These guys have done a, a sterling job. Absolutely sterling job. The HST sign board signs are there for the HST speeds. That does come into it. There's also an Auburn South signal box. We'll see this. Um, one of our guys is part of a, a club, part of the preservation group that looks after this, so it was really nice to see this in. Um, we'll have a look at that when we get there as well. Uh, Luton Airport. 
Luton Airport. Uh, Luton Airport Parkway, keep an eye and ear out for the landing aircraft. This can be seen from many miles away. So once north of a cutting at Harpenden or south of Leegrave, make sure to place a spot the A320. Nice to have an actual plane in uh, TS, not some weird, odd concoction that we've had before. Actually looks like a, uh, a certain orange airline's A320. Definitely not easy yet. Um, please note your ambient audio volume must be set as described at the beginning of this manual to hear the plane. So, infrastructure, signalling. All signals are now placed correctly with accurate ID plates, which match industry signalling diagrams. Missing ground signals have also been added in many locations. The height of signals, whether they are offset or whether they are on gantries, has also been taken into account. Um, LED signals have been added where applicable. Like the boundary fencing, if they were changed during the routes era of 2011 to 2019, the type in place is the longest they've been used. Using the signal enhancement pack, which has been packaged with this route for use in this route only, Realistic approach control behaviour on divergent junctions implemented with accurate release distances on many signals and plausible ones on others where the reference material was not available to us. In addition, associated position lights illuminated, illuminate for routes as per reality. Also, all of the lovely visuals as seen in our signal enhancement pack, such as signal aspect sequencing and incandescent bulb fade are all present. Finally, the original versions route stuff from signal gantries which were too low, sometimes clipping trains, and also gantry signals which lacked both sight and boards behind them. Both of these things have now been rectified, so we are seeing all those back in. Quite often on uh, quite a few of these gantries either had the signal signals were like hanging or like floating off of the gantries. Um it was one of the big complaints when it came out. Again, this area is just looking really nice. Everything sort of just fits in. So, I mean, there's nothing too standout ish. The colour palette across the whole route looks really nice, especially at this time of night with the lighting. Oh, we're doing 113 mile now. That's really naughty of me. That's what you get for me talking. Remember, we're here for the route, not my driving skills. And you're getting a good look at it with this uh, 700s window. We're going to arrive a bit early, I think, now. Not too bad, actually. Right, speed limits. Speed limits have been moved, changed where they were previously incorrect. Also, from December 2013, many stretches of the fast lines from Elstree Tunnel northwards were upgraded to allow 125 mile an hour compared to the previous maximum of 110. These have been added and are boarded HST, which applies to the HST and 222s that use the route. Um, Dudding Hill Junction. Located between Cricklewood and Hendon and our Brent Curve Junction north facing and Cricklewood's Curve Junction south facing, from which two sides of a triangle meeting at Duddington, Dudding Hill Junction. These cords serve the freight only line to Acton and where the majority of freight trains join the middle of Main Line. This track has been relayed with accurate gradients and scenery to provide a natural start and end point for freight scenarios. Nice. We can deal with that. I've slowed down too much now. Junction Road Junction. Junction, 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 road, junction, junctioning, junction to some of the junction. Similar to Dunning Junction, scenery and track have been added between Carlton Road Junction and Junction Road Junction to give a natural start and end point for freight scenarios using this link to the Gospel Oak Barking Line. Uh, Kings Cross Thameslink. Despite the era of the route being 2011 to 2019, Kings Cross Thameslink station has been represented in full late 90s, early 2000s regalia to provide proper start and end point in London for scenarios based before the station's closure in 2007. That's a really nice touch. I uh, can't remember what it was. Was it, was it a 319 pack that came with, I think? But it's nice to have it in, especially for some older set scenarios. And going like 2007 isn't going to be drastically in the route's too drastically out. I know we've got the 12 car extensions, but I think I'd rather have a modern route that I can backdate in my head than an old route that I'm using for the future, that I'm using for now. So, does that make sense to people? Probably not, but it does to me. I know what I mean. Now, I should get that across to you quite eloquently, but I'm not that good at that. So I'll say it again. So what I mean is, I prefer having a modern route that I can backdate in my head, use my imagination to be driving a scenario from the past, rather than using an old crappy route and trying to make it in today's sort of standard. Um, it'd be like doing a modern scenario on, say, Western Lines of Scotland, I wouldn't be that keen on. Uh, but I'd quite happily do a backdated Midland Main Line scenario on this route. That should make sense. Stop car markers. Um, 12 car platform and siding stuff. Right, here's the wonderful. We'll also have a listen to the 
the ambient audio around here because we'll get to that as well. So this is an Auburn South signal box. So they they have they meet really very regularly. Actually, I think it's weekly. Um, they sort of they've also got some really cool things in here. I've seen like they've got some bits from a Eurostar in here. They've got some other bits and pieces. It's very cool though. It's very cool. I'm very jealous of our guy that goes here. I'm going to go with him one day to have a look at it all. But I'd love to have something that sort of close to else that you could just go and sit and it also gives you like the best view of the track doesn't it like is there is there a better sort of like train veg location for the middle of mainline fans than that 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 signal box there right let's hope i've got slowing down quick enough for this it should be take it up to 70 percent for a second Probably could have just kept that at 50 and I probably would have rolled in quite nicely. And I'm sure I've got to keep in my head that it's um 12 car anyway, so we're gonna be going to the pretty much the end of the platforms as it is. Right. Shh. I can hear some bird tweets, but I don't know if that's outside my house or this. Uh, I'll be honest. There is a thing in here that says that if TS is trying to play too many sounds, it will cut the ambient ones out first, which is a nice touch. I must say. So that might be what's happening there. Maybe I just don't have a delicate enough ear for them. So we'll go on to that. What I'm talking about, let's let's talk about that. Right, so audio. All existing ambient audio has been removed and replaced with newly recorded audio from 59 separate locations on the route. In reality. Whether it's the roar of the M1 traffic at Mill Hill Broadway or the tweeting of the birds at Radlett or the sirens of Luton, those sounds intend to immerse you even further in the route. Please know that your ambient audio volume must be set. I have done that um, to what it should be. Finally, we recognise that sound of the trains themselves are more important than the ambient audio. So if train simulator hits its limits of number of sounds that it can play at once, ambient audio will mute itself before the other sounds. So if you can't hear the ambient audio, that's why. So that's probably what happened there because there was like three 720s in the platform at the same time as well. Reverb. Detailed reverb effects have been added throughout the route, so you hear the, the sound change as you pass through tunnels under bridges. More subtle reverb has also been added where there are solid structures close to the line, including brick cuttings, walls on the approaches to London. Again, as described in the beginning of the manual, please make sure you have EFX switch. I do, and your in-game audio set as requested, which I do. Neutral section. New sections are there. That's nice. St Pancras low-level track rumble. Anyone who's been to Thameslink St Pancras platforms will know that there's a track that makes a distinctive kind of resonant sound when trains arrive and depart. This has been implemented. This is something I hadn't really noticed in real life. So I'm going to have to go and have a look at that. Um, right, we skipped a load, but I want to do the bits and bobs and then go back about the scenic bits because um, it gets all the, all the information out first time, doesn't it? No, 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 no. Mm. My AWS plunger was not set. So we have had a AWS activation. I do apologize. This will be whatever time we made up earlier. We're now lost again. So again, we're not here for the scenario or the driving. We can look at this lovely tractor. Uh... It's a blue one, so it could be a Ford or a New Holland. Um, it might come in green, then it could be a John Deere. 
Uh, yeah. Love, lovely bit of bit of countryside, this bit. Anyway, moving on. That looks smart, though. That does look really nice. Like, as daft as this sounds, it is bits like this. These sort of countryside -y bits that were so let down by the old route, which now just look really nice. Very plain bit of the route. Very plain bit of the route. I'm not going to see it taking screenshots, but I will use a couple maybe for the video when I find nice bits. Right, bits and bobs, sorry. Uh, this is Richard's Bits and Bobs. We always like talking about Richard's Bits and Bobs, one of my favourite subjects when it comes to train sim. Numerous custom scenery assets to represent structures on the route. For everything you see, uh, an effort has been made to ensure there is a consistent use of shading and colour, so scenery assets looking right in the overall scene. Let's remember I was on restrictive aspects. Um, that is actually really quite obvious and quite striking. Um, I'll be completely honest. So, for example, a consistent shade of white, which is neither too dark or too bright. I think that comes across really well, actually, in this. It looks very, very good. Very, very good. Platform 1 and 2 at Harpenden have been relayed to feature a more realistic curve. Slow lines slewed around the arch overbridge of Marlis or south of Harpenden rather than just being straight as per the original version. Crickerwood south siding added. These were constructed in 2014, 2015, ready for 700s. This does not include the extension to the south siding, which was constructed in 2020, though. Crickerwood north siding extended in length and Auburn centre siding extended in length. Tunnels made properly dark. Um... Bromham Road Bridge, north of Bedford Station, replaced with an arched bridge. Greenish lighting at St Pancras Thames Link platforms, replaced with a more realistic neutral colour. Yeah, nice. Um, track from the track enhancement package used. I came speeding over that junction because I wasn't looking. I'm going to talk about the points in a second, actually. Additional bullhead jointed track is used in a small number of locations, still exists. Elstow, Luton, Limbury Road, Luton Crescent Road, Radlett, Redland Stone, West Hampstead Down Carriage Loop. Um, West Hampstead, Thameslink Footbridge has been painted purple as per prototype 2014. Numerous portals added for scenery creation. Right, there's a bit I've missed that I wanted to read, and it is about... Ah, here. Rough riding over junctions. Now, I've spotted it. I have spotted it um, while I've been driving, and you might have spotted it as well. Um... I will be interesting to see if we get any comments on the, this video before people have watched up to this point um, about the rough riding over the points. It's become a little bit of a faux pas, I suppose, in trains in these days. We've sort of been aiming for the smoothest track we can uh, in a lot of routes. But this is kind of a nice idea. So I'll read what it says. Rough riding over junctions. When passing over junctions, and particularly at speed, you'll experience a rougher ride just like in reality. This is visible both inside and outside of the cab. So it is the track roughness has probably been changed uh, for the sections of points, which I don't know if I quite like yet. I always like a bit of cab sway. Don't get me wrong. One of my favourite things in train sim. When it came in, that was like super duper immersive. I hated it when it wasn't in uh, TSW. Was I supposed to stop at Harpenden? Yes, I was. So this has also been relayed. Oh, no, 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 no. We're going to be a bit late, right? But I'm going to... Bugger off you. There is definitely some, some ambient audio there. Um, am I sold that... Mm, I don't know. I 
think it's one of those things. The way I'll explain it is like announcements. So when people first started talking about getting announcements in Train Sim, I was a bit like, it doesn't really, doesn't float my boat. I don't really get it. I can see why people want it, but it wasn't something for me. Now, it was just a personal thing. It wasn't just for me. Um, but then the more I played with them and the more we worked with them and the more the software got better and the announcements got better, the more I found myself quite enjoying them. And now I do enjoy them. So is it going to be something like this with ambient noise? I'm not out of the cab enough to appreciate it. But I'm sure those of you guys who do spend a lot of time at, at, stand at stations and trains and watching the trains or doing rail fan scenarios or that sort of jazz will really appreciate the difference in, differences in the ambient sounds. For me, I'm not sure it's a, 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 a feature I would go out my way to do. Don't look at the HST, it's shy. It's shy, don't look at the HST. Ooh, shy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd really like to know what you guys think. Because I even had this conversation on stream when the guys I was on stream with was like, oh, no, I love ambient audio. And um, Klaus even likes ambient audio as well. I don't personally. So it is definitely one of those uh, horses for courses things in TS. This is looking stunning again. I think it really is the colours all being... I think some people are going to think they're too dull. I don't think it is, though. I think it looks lovely. Or maybe in a different light and it might look different. I think everything looks like it blends really well. Attention to detail, line side is great as well. Yeah, I have no complaints. Currently, the reason I'm checking my phone a lot is I don't know the price. Um, I have messaged Richards to say, what's the price? Um, but I don't know the price. Currently. But he might message me back before the end of the video. I usually don't tell you till the end of the video anyway. Because I don't tend to look. Because I don't like that to sort of... change my view on things while I'm doing the recording. But to me, this could be a new route price and I'd be happy just purely because it basically is a new route. Um, requirements wise, let's talk about your requirements. So, uh, so just for the route, so I'm not going to get into the whole Oh, you need to have this, that, and the other, and oh, you need four million packs. Why is that? Not, I'm not clicked on the stream. Sorry, if I click on the off the train, then my keyboard doesn't work on the train. So we've got another AWS intervention there. That's it's on purpose because we're going to have a look at this. Where are we going to stop? I really wanted to examine the cant on this track and this tree line here. Um, this embankment's very famous. Um, the very famous engineer Thomas Telford. Uh, was part of engineering this and this is where he tripped over a piece of toast and broke his leg um, just just here just literally I stopped in exactly the right place for it so it's absolutely fine but anyway yeah there's a nice little uh, fact for you for the route <laughs> um, sorry completely forgot what I was talking about now requirements I was finding the requirements yeah all these people that go oh yeah but you've got the requirements for the route and then you've got like 10 requirements for, for the scenarios cool you don't have to play the scenarios. You can just drive it as it is. Um, but you got to you got to take it when it comes. I'm just trying to find them in the manual. Do, 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 do. Feature scenery, infrastructure, audio. I can't see him, and I'm, I'm doing these uh, signals. I'll end up missing that AWS again. So it gives us a second to do that. From what I can remember, before we get any further, it is one of the more modern JT routes and the middle and main line from DTG. I can't think, I don't think there's anything else. 
and it will need that for the JT route so you've got the common library because there's assets in this from the common library which work really nicely in this pack really really nicely in this pack Luton Airport We didn't see the A320. Oh, I might, I think we might have seen the A320, and I was reading that and missed it. Oh, that was my all stop board there, wasn't it? No. What was that for then? Was that an all stop board? Or was that an RO? It might be Maro or U1. Right, now let's look for requirements. System requirements we've done. You will need... Okay, there's more than I thought. Middle main line, the base route. That's the DTG middle main line, not the JT one. You'll then need DTG's Chatham main line, London, Victoria, Blackfriars, Dover, Ramsgate. And then you'll need West Coast Main Line, South London, Euston to Birmingham. So you need those three DTG routes installed. Okay, and then you just need one of the following from Just Train. So either Midland Main Line, Sheffield Derby, South Western Expressway, Reading, or Wessex Main Line, Southampton, Salisbury. If you have one of those in, it'll work. Okay, that's just for the route. Of course, there are more requirements for the scenarios. That's going to be your, uh, your VP185 pack, your 700s. Um, the 700 EP, and then the 222. I think that's probably about it. But there we are on the product page anyway. So DTG Midland Main Line, London to Bedford. DTG Chatham Main Line, London, Victoria and Blackfriars, Dover and Ramsgate. DTG West Coast Main Line South, London, Houston to Birmingham. And at least one of the more modern JT routes. So Midland Main Line, Sheffield, Derby. Southwestern Expressway to Reading, Wessex Main Line, Southampton, Salisbury. Just seeing if we maybe could see a glimpse of that A320. This is looking decent here as well. This was just all such a mess, and it's just... I will happily tear up and down this route a good few times. I've come in way too fast because I was talking too much and not focusing on actually stopping this train. Joys and modern brakes, see? Joys and modern brakes. Right, I see what the ambient noise is at Luton. I suppose this is quite a nice thing, like, like having to sort of, what did it say? Sirens at Luton, did it? Sounds about right. It's, I can just imagine Richard standing there with a microphone, looking dodgy as hell, recording ambient sounds at stations. I can actually picture it. Again, I mean, like, there's only two trains. This is looking nice, though. That oh, looks so much better, doesn't it? Yeah, see, I can't hear it. And I've got my, my volume set as it should be. I wonder if even just having two trains there is doing it. I doubt it. Shouldn't do. Actually, while we're here.
I wonder if we just pull ahead a bit. Oh, have I just left before I was meant to? No. It was all good. May not have opened my doors. No, I did. Shows you how much I'm concentrating on the actual driving of the train when I'm doing these videos. Even when I concentrate, I'm not that good at it. But it's all good fun. This bit again. Like... Tonight, when I'm streaming this, I'm going to... I'm not streaming this, because this, this won't be out till tomorrow, but... I'm going to stream the original Midland Mainline tonight. And I'll have to keep really quiet on stream that I've driven this, but... Even just, like... The overgrown sidings along the lines just just it just works and it's not so tall it's really low it's all been hidden properly i think what's going to happen it's going to be interesting for those guys that re i've massively been speeding again um those guys that don't like the um, the um, what am I trying to say here? The sort of lower sort of colour palette, the sort of more toned down, sort of more consistent colour palette. There's people out there that really like oversaturated stuff and like crank all the settings up on reshade and um, railworks enhancer as well. I probably could have done that on just 70% break, you know. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with it, or what they think of it. I think it really fits. Loving these lights on these poles as well. There's Z fighting going on, but nothing, nothing that isn't to be expected with train sim being a train sim. We've got it here, we've got the birds again. Yeah, they're there. I'm just not sure if the variety is just justifies it even. I don't know. I suppose it's a fun game to play when you're driving. You can pop out and listen to each each different sound set. And it's a small addition. I mean, I know it's quite a big thing. 59 different sound sets, all of that. That's a big amount. Um, so, as I said, it's going to be Marmite, I think people are going to love it or not like it at all. Or people aren't just going to be that fussed, I don't know. I think it's going to be a good mix. All in all, my view of it so far is lovely. Really, really impressive. It's... I think it's the sort of standard of new things we're going to be seeing in TS anyway. We're going to start seeing a lot more of these um, route refreshes rather than whole new routes. We'll definitely still see new routes coming, don't get me wrong. Um, but I think route refreshes will definitely be um, something we'll see a little bit more of coming up. And I, I'm not fussed about that. I really am not fussed about that. I think there are so many routes we've got out there already that could be redone. I know people are going to go, yeah, but why put all the effort into re redoing a route when you could start a new route and do a whole new route? 
things are expensive to make and do at the minute if we can reuse some of the th stuff we have or take some of the effort out not effort but the cost out of it it's reflected back in the cost you end up you guys end up with and especially the routes like this and the great eastern mainline which were borderline unplayable um are now both fully playable <laughs> bonus They've both got the attention to detail that they deserved. So you've got some wobble there, but that's not on the points. It's not a criticism. It's just that we've been so used to people going all out to get track really smooth. Should really come off the power when in a neutral section, you know. I think you really have to in with modern units, but I think it is good practice to still. I know like everything thigh wrist on which you didn't strictly have to come out, uh, out off the power, but I think most companies still do say come off the power and their professional driving standards or whatever. Oh, what's that then? Sewage works, do we reckon? Harlington, not a station or a town I've ever been to. Is it in Bedfordshire? I'm guessing it is in Bedfordshire. I might say be Hertfordshire, no, because we're in Luton, past Luton, so yeah, it's definitely Bedfordshire. It's weird, because I live in Cambridge, this whole bit would just sort of been like the Luton and sort of south bit is actually quite a nightmare to get to, whereas Bedford's just down the 428. So, I've done quite a lot in Bedford itself. But not really much. Well, a couple of pubs around and stuff. Of course, Bedford, the, the world-famous uh, Oasis swimming pool at Bedford which I think I had went every year for my birthday for about 12 years, I think. Um, it's closed now. I don't know if... It, I'm hoping it's going to reopen, but it was minging the last time we were there. It's, it's a... If you've never seen it, guys, look it up. It's a brilliant glass pyramid. It's a really cool sort of 80s building. I think it was opened 1990. It was when we first moved down here. And it's a glass pyramid, and it used to have all these real cool fountains out the front and everything. It literally looks like something out of an 80s sci-fi film. Um, it's great. It had two really good flumes in it. Fantastic pool. But it was definitely showing its age when I was there last time. I took my kids a couple of years ago and it was tatty, to say the least. Before lockdown or after lockdown? It was after lockdown. But yeah, it's a very cool pool. I hope it does reopen. You used to have a hologram machine in it in the arcade. Brilliant. Can't really think what else Bedford is really known massively for itself, like Bedford itself. Uh, I'm sure it's got some historical significance. The airship hangars, they're near Bedford, on the way. Whereas that begins with C, isn't it? Been past them on the boat as well. Out that way. Cramlington? Cramlington? That's what I want to say. But yeah, this, this, this bit's a bit more the area I know a little bit more. But I'm going to talk about the thing that I always talk about when it comes down to routes, and that is feel. Does it feel like the route should? 
Yes. Yes, it really, really does. Does it feel like its own route? Yes. It doesn't feel generic. I think that's the clever use of assets and things like that. It doesn't feel like a generic route. Like, you could pick a section of this and know it was this route. Whereas I think especially some of the other sections of the Midland Main Line, you can't do that with. Or like some sections of the East Coast Main Line, you can't really do that with. But here, yeah. You'd know. Just nice, isn't it? It's just nice. Right, stop worrying about screenshots and uh, slow your train down. I just don't drive the 700 enough to be proficient with its brakes. Not that I'd need those DOO monitors, but they are there. Because, of course, we'd be using the CCTV in this. Again, it's nice that they've done they've done work on the exteriors of the stations, which I really like as well. Again, I can't hear any ambient audio. It might be something my end, I'm hoping. I think it might work on some and not others. And, right, this isn't a criticism, but the thing that the only bit that lets this 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 view down is the cars. That bit along the whole the sort of front of that the screen where the trains actually going looks absolutely stunning, doesn't it? And it's not that's not criticism of the route. It's just we don't have any decent cars in TS. And just to be fair, it doesn't really make that much difference. But how many times are you actually looking out for screenshots like that? Not often. I think driving at this time of night is always nice as well. But I can see myself happily, happily bobbing up and down here in a 222 or an HST. Or a 700 or a 319. It's going to be heaven for driving some 319 scenarios as well. Some decent freight runs. It's going to open up this bit again massively. 
I don't know, even there's going to be some scenarios. Some of our scenario guys are going to be all over this. No, Mr. Ivel is going to be all over this. This is his local line, and he, he is well and truly the master of it. He will know every inch of it. And the tunnels are properly black as well. Like the, I know it's I know it's a lot of it's to, to do with swept and stuff, but the um the, the the distant scenery, funnily enough, is what keeps catching my eyes. The bits between the hedges, it's done really nicely. Like the distant is worked out really well. I'm gonna have a fly about over there in a bit. There definitely is some, some track wobble. I don't know, it's not meant to be a billiard table. I get that. Um, but... I think there definitely is a bit of... Probably unwanted track wobble going on in some of these curves. That doesn't make anything unplayable, though, put it that way. Adds to its character. Should we say that? That'll do. Anything I missed out of the manual quickly? Luton Airport, we went through this. Oh, there's a couple of the junction bits, wasn't there? Neutral sections we spoke about. Cab secure radio. Um, let's keep you back there. Capsule Radio CSR signs should be placed as per reality for when CSR was still in usage pre 2014 ish. This means that scenario creators will not need to manually place the signage themselves to have operational CSR in their scenarios. Simply work out of the box with any of our rolling stock that has it simulated. So that's a nice, nice point as well. That is literally the only bit we missed out of the manual. Neutral sections, we said that, didn't we? Relevant signage, so that doesn't have to be done manually. Stop car markers. So, the full length unit, reduced length unit, and all signage has been put in for the 700s. Additional stopping points are provided in the scenario editor so scenario creators can stop AI in the correct position with ease. Nice little touch. Done about the audio. Scenarios. So, it comes with one, two, three, four scenarios. Luton to Orpington, 9 Kilo 101. And then we have uh, 9 Romeo 56, which is a scenario we're doing. This is Gatwick Airport to Bedford. And then you've got 9 Romeo 63, which is a Bedford to Three Bridges. Um, and then we have a 9 Lima 93, a Bedford to East Grinstead. These are quite long signal sections here, so I don't need to slow down too much. Uh, for the for scenarios for variety, we have updated the scenarios in the following packs. Oh, wow. Okay, right. So, you get your scenarios here. That's fine. Right? But also, so this is coming with actually, this is going to be a tranche of, of new scenarios. So, the VP185 pack, three scenarios. The 317 pack, three scenarios. The 319 pack, volume one, six scenarios. The 319 pack, volume two, three scenarios. Uh, 377, 379, enhancement pack, three scenarios. Uh, JGA, K, PHA, Wagon Pack, one, uh, one scenario. JPA, Wagon, one scenario. Sky and Weather Enhancement Pack, 2.0, one scenario. Scenario? Oh, that was, the, yeah, it was 319, wasn't it? For the weather pack. With a lightning. Um, And TDA, D, Wagon Pack, one scenario. So that's... 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 updated scenarios as well. I don't think anybody can say that they've been tight with that, can they?
That's that's a fair amount. That's good. That's good going. That is good going. And this was nice as well. All this was really barren. And over this side here has all been redone as well. That's looking lovely. There we go. We've got the platform now. Yeah, this is nice. This is nice. I'm watching my FPS up here because this is supposed to be one of the bad bits as well. 28 at the moment. 27. Plenty of 700s around. Tile drop there. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Watch my FPS, not my own speed, mind you. Well done, guys. Well done to Toby. Um, it is uh, uh, Pablo and Richard. Four aspects sims. So that's going to be um, Benedict Cooper as well. Well done, guys. This is a lovely, lovely product. And of course, big congratulations. Well done to Richard as well. This is a lovely route. It makes a massive difference. Absolute game changer for the middle and mainline stuff, guys. Well done. Really well done. Let's see more of it. Give us more. Do you know, you could always do that missing section. That would be quite nice. I know, that's a from scratch route, though. Love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I, I think I've said everything I need to say for it, to be honest. Go and buy it. If you like the middle of main on, you like some AC unit stuff, and you've got a lot of the, the AP packs that run on this route already, it's a no-brainer. Go and pick this pack up. It is banging. I'm thoroughly, thoroughly looking forward to being able to show it off on stream and stuff as well. All right, and guys, thanks ever so much for watching. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to this video. Head on over to alantonsonsim.com for your latest and greatest train sim needs. If you're not subscribed, please do think about just hitting the subscribe button. I hate saying this because all YouTube are saying it at the moment, but YouTube are pushing us to say it. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything to click that subscribe button. So do click on it. It does help me. helps the channel and means we can do more messing around on train sim for longer. All right, guys, once again, thanks ever so much. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.